What's up, Dream Team? How are you doing? I am Shan, and this is Dream with Shan, and you have joined me for yet another pre-med series video. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about writing personal statements. So if that's something that you're interested in, please stay tuned for the video. And also, just to give a brief introduction to anyone who's new to my channel, I am Shan. This is Dream with Shan. I'm a non-traditional medical student. I'm a mother of two, and I had a life all outside of medicine before coming to medical school. So now I vlog about my non-traditional journey in medical school, life outside of medical school, which consists of my children and my nonprofit organization that I found and run. And I share that with you all. So if it's something that you're interested in, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like this video, and share with the masses so everyone can take a glimpse of my non-traditional medical school life. All right. So, like I was saying, this video is about personal statements and how to write a bomb Stella, 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 Stella personal statement. Okay, so the first thing that you need to do when you're writing a personal statement is decide what your theme is going to be because this theme should be really evident throughout your entire personal statement. You should be able to tie in all of your experiences, life changing events, school life, personal life, whatever you decide to write your personal statement should be tied to this theme. And you should be able to tell this theme in a story and not actually even say that my theme is blah, 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 blah. And once you realize what your theme is, you use that to kind of create what the narrative is that you would like to share with the world. For example, my theme was perseverance. And I guess you would say perseverance and resilience. Um, and the way that I shared this was I talked about situations in my life that required me to be very resilient and to persevere in times of stress, in times of failure, in times of weakness. And I also talked about how I overcame those things and was able to make it to the point where I was able to apply to medical school and feel like I was a candidate worthy of being someone's physician. You pick your theme based on what you want to portray about yourself. Everyone is a very, very, very unique individual, of course. And you may have tons of tons of traits and things about yourself that you find to be noteworthy. However, what are the things that you want the admissions committee to know about you and how could that trait or that theme assist you into being a great medical student for their school? So think about that when you decide to write a personal statement. Also, when you're writing your personal statement, you want your first paragraph to be one that is catchy not like cliche catchy, but something that when someone reads it, it's like, okay, I want to read more about this person. I want to learn more about who this person is. You can either start off with a quote, you can start off with a story, you can start off with a gasp, you know, something that's going to make them say, who is this person? <laughs> whether they're dramatic, whether they're, you know, whatever it is, I want to find out more about this. And then as I went through my personal statement, the first paragraph, I think I talked about health challenges in my family, you know, things like that. And that was what really triggered me to want to go into medicine. Um, I talked about my experiences from volunteering. I talked about even some of my failures. So this is one thing that when I hear, when I talk to certain people, they have different um, outlooks on if you should talk about failure in your personal statement. So for me, Failure was a big part of my life. Like I took the MCAT multiple times. I had a few C's on my transcripts. I even had an F on my transcript, I believe. Or no, I had a D. I had a D on my transcript. So those are things that you're going to see when I apply. So for me, I didn't want to not say anything and make it seem like I was hiding those. So I talked about my experiences with failure and basically said what was going on. You know, I didn't make excuses. I said, you know, this was happening. I was not able to cope with those things. I had poor time management, blah, blah, blah. Then I listed, then I talked about experiences and things that I've done since then that have allowed me to build better time management to, you know, be a better student. And I had things to back them up, like my post back program, my grades were stellar and I worked. And I talked about how, you know, in a time of my life, I was able to eventually be able to balance parenting, work and school. And that allowed me to succeed in my post program. So if you're going to talk about your failure, number one thing, if you mention your failure and you do not turn around and mention how you've overcome that, 
then you've lost the admissions committee because they want to know, okay, you failed the class. Okay, you had to take the MCAT more than once. What did you learn from that experience? How did you grow? And show me, don't just tell me that you've grown from it. Give me an example of how you've actually grown from that. And you want to do this in as few words as possible because you don't want a very lengthy personal statement because there's no telling if someone's going to read past the second paragraph or if they're going to read past the third paragraph. So again, stay true and congruent to yourself when you're writing your personal statement, but you don't want to overdo it. You do want to include things in your personal statement that may not necessarily be able to be found on your um, transcript or in your application because those may be personal things that have helped form you into the individual who you are. And also, um, when I was applying to medical school, I applied to both DO and MD programs and their personal statement length were, was two different characters. So it was like I was kind of mad because then I had to cut bits and pieces out in one application and include them in the other. So I suggest that if you're applying to both, ACOMAS and AMCAS, if this is even still a thing right now, make sure that you look at which one has the um, shorter character length requirements and tailor your personal statement to that. So that way you don't feel like you have to cut bits and pieces out once you go into the next application portal. So I definitely um, encourage you to do that because you don't want to miss anything important that you have to say. And lastly, again, stay true and congruent to yourself. Make sure that you are writing something that is true. Don't add anything false. Don't steal anything from anyone else. I know that's plain as day, you know, that you wouldn't do that, but you do have to say that. Um, make sure that you're able to convey what you want to convey and then have people proofread it for you. I would say have at least a handful of people that proofread it. You can have people you know who know you proofread it, people who don't know you proofread it because then they're going to say I by reading this personal statement I can picture who you are as a person and I understand and then you know also ask them what do you think my theme of this personal statement is if someone is reading your personal statement and they can't say dang you sound like you really persevered oh you sound like you're really compassionate about dogs or whatever then if that's your goal to be able to convey your personal statement then you missed it so you want, might want to go back and reword some things or work on some things and don't be discouraged if you have five ten people to say they love your personal statement and then five to ten people to say they hate it think about who's reading your personal statement and where they lie on the love hate pendulum and then kind of decide what you want to do because you don't want to change your personal statement just because half the people hate it is it true to you is it grammar is it grammatically correct is your theme present okay use those things to guide you but again make sure that you're keeping in mind your trust the people who you trust and how they see and um see your personal statement or how they read your personal statement based on who they know you to be as a person so again, those are just my quick little tips on personal statements, <laughs> kind of all over the place, but that's a little bit of just who I am in general. Um, but again, make sure that you are conveying who you are as a person in your personal statement and taking the time to actually write it. You need to do at least two or three drafts before you can say yay or nay to the personal statement. Okay, so that is personal statements in a quickie. So if you are new to the channel, remember to subscribe if you have not smashed the like button please do that and i will see you guys in my next video